United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Pamela Kipps, and on behalf of Reverend David Bonney and our entire ministry team, we'd just like to say how glad we are that you joined us for worship this morning. I'd like to invite you all to join with us now in singing the hymn, My Hope is Built. <laughs> Savior Jesus Christ. Let me ask you, how are you doing in this pandemic? Some of you may answer, well, I'm hanging in there. Some may answer, this is tough. This is scary or I feel really anxious or afraid. More than ever, we rely on our faith. In good times, but also in times of need, we rely on our faith. Now, our faith is more than good luck. Our faith is more than the spirit in the sky. Our faith is in the risen Lord, Jesus Christ. I want to return to a familiar passage of scripture, one of the post-resurrection appearances of Jesus that we find in John's Gospel, chapter 20, and I'm going to pick up with verse 26. A week later, Jesus' disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put them in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe.
This is the word of God for all of us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. The word believe is something that we use in various ways. We might say we Americans believe in inalienable rights. Or perhaps we say we believe that love, joy, and hope are good things. But we also use believe to say that I believe my favorite sport team will win the championship this year. Or perhaps someone may say, I believe in Bigfoot, or I believe that the world is flat. What do we mean as Christians, as followers of Jesus, when we revolve around the world believe? Let's take a look at our scripture passage for today. The disciples are hidden away in the upper room. They are afraid that they'll be executed next. But suddenly in the midst of them appears the risen Lord. And Jesus focuses on one disciple in particular in this moment. The disciple Thomas. Known in history as Doubting Thomas. But notice that Jesus doesn't dismiss him or treat him unkindly. Rather, Jesus gives him an invitation, an invitation to believe. Now, as we take a look at that word believe, as we understand it through good, solid Greek scholarship, it means more than simply believing that something is the color red or blue. To believe means, in the Greek language of the New Testament, to trust to put one's trust into something or someone. So Jesus is saying to Thomas, Thomas, don't doubt, trust in me. And also notice the great promise that's there for you and me as well. Jesus said, blessed are those who have not seen, we weren't there in the upper room, yet have come to believe, have come to trust. So when we ask the question, what do I believe? That's first and best addressed by asking, who do I trust? And we have the capacity to do this. We don't have to be perfect at all. We don't have to have really any of the answers. Thomas is not a perfect person and we are not either. We have this capacity as, as people, as human beings to trust. Years ago, when I was a child, I was on a hike through a nature trail with my grandfather. We came to a little swing bridge over what amounted to be a ditch. But you can imagine what a small child would think looking at that. It might as well have been a swing bridge over the Grand Canyon. And some of the wooden planks were missing. I remember freezing there at the entrance to the bridge when my grandfather extended his hand and said, Here now, trust me. He wanted me to take his hand and cross the bridge. He didn't say believe in the bridge. He said, trust me. And that's what Jesus Christ, the risen Lord, says to each and every one of us today, tomorrow, and always. Put your trust, believe in him. I want us to confess what we believe, to confess what we trust, using that historic confession of the Christian faith. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
Each week in our worship, we have the opportunity to come together in prayer. So would you join me now? Gracious and holy God, we gather as your people, separated by the miles, but united in our love for you and our longing to know you and to lean into your promises. We give thanks this morning, Lord, for the blessings that surround us, the provisions that we enjoy, food and shelter. We give thanks, Lord, for the beauty of creation, which reminds us of new life, that your hand is always at work, that you are never far from us. We give thanks, Lord, for the gift of community and faith, which sustains us in times of trial. And with confidence, we lift up our prayers to you now, Lord, knowing that you hear us. God, we pray for all those who are struggling, those who are dealing with worry and angst, anxiety and depression. We ask, Lord, that you grant them comfort and strength and peace. For all those, Lord, who are ill, we pray, pray for healing. We pray for all those who are caring for them. We ask that you put a hedge of protection around them. We pray for all those, Lord, who are working day in and day out to care for our communities, to provide for us, to meet our needs. And God, we pray for all those who are struggling with anger or frustration, disappointment or hurt. We pray that you would mend our hearts and mend our relationships where there's a tendency for criticism or judgment. We pray, God, that you would fill our hearts with stillness, and peace, and grace, and compassion, and forgiveness. God, where we are inclined to speak negatively, we ask that you rework in us a heart of love and lead us into a place of servanthood. Help us to see how we can use the gifts that we have been given to bless others in this time. God, we ask that you help us to believe. Through the Spirit, we ask you to help us to trust in you. We pray all these things in the words that your Son taught us. Our Father, Father who, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will, will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we prepare to go forth this week and be God's people, I pray your blessing, a blessing upon you. And I ask that you go forth strong and convicted that the Lord goes with us. We encourage you to stay connected with our church through our Facebook page and our website. Join our prayer group or our Bible study, or join us on Friday for our new weekly devotional. Your church loves you and your church is here for you. We pray that you would always remember that above all else, no matter where you are or what, you, what you've done, no matter who you encounter, or how much you struggle, your Lord walks with you and loves you. Amen. Let us now depart.